Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this Sunday, the 28th of February. It's very good to have you with us. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you and also with you. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude and listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God. Though we have rebelled against him, let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Therefore, let us say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are. And direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now the Church's special prayer for today, the Collect. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings and follow in his way and come to be share in his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now all worship in this well-known hymn for Lent, 40 Days and 40 Nights. That was a really lovely hymn that we just listened to, 40 Days and 40 Nights, and it just tells us a story about Lent and why we remember um, this time leading up to Easter. Uh, so now we have come to the point in our service where we're going to do our thankfulness jars like we did last week. So I now have some post-its, which is super exciting. Um, so I'm going to write on a post-it something I am thankful for, and I'm going to pop it in my jar. So grab a pen and some post-its or a scrap of paper and just take a few seconds just to think about something you're thankful for and pop it in your jar.
There we go. Um, it's now time to carry on with the service. Our reading for today is taken from the Gospel according to Mark and is read by Mark Weldon. Gospel reading is taken from Mark, chapter 14, verses 32 to 37. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Mark. This reading will now be followed by a talk by David Perriman. Good morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to your word, we pray that you'll speak to our hearts, to our minds and to our lives. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Last week saw the beginning of our five-week series of sermons and group studies on unanswered prayer. It's a brilliant series to be doing in Lent and a super appropriate topic for us to be looking at during this coronavirus lockdown when so many have been under such extreme pressure. And last week Jan started us off and as we looked at together at just three of the Beatitudes and saw afresh just how revolutionary Jesus and unusual Jesus' teaching was as he pronounced blessing of the poor in spirit, the meek and those who mourn, hardly the world's first choice as a place to look for blessing. And I hope you linked up with the group this week, if only just for this Lent course. And the other thing to mention is that the course is based on a brilliant book by Pete Gregg called God on Mute. So if for some reason a group is not your thing, then why not get the book and read it or even listen to it on audio? The titles of the next three sermons in our series give a clue to our direction of travel. Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday and Easter Sunday. And today it's Maundy Thursday. And if you think of Maundy Thursday, I wonder which features of the story come to your mind. For me, because I've been involved with it so much, it's the Last Supper, Jesus's Passover meal with his friends, which we've celebrated for many years now in the benefits on Maundy Thursday. Or perhaps for you it's the foot washing ceremony reenacted in many churches or maybe the Queen's Maundy, Thurs Maundy service. And I must admit that Jesus's prayer time in the Garden of Gethsemane has seldom featured in my meditations on the day. But it is just that to which Pete Gregg directs our attention as we think about unanswered prayer today. Remember the scene. Jesus has just completed his symbolic last meal with his disciples, the meal we continue to remember week by week through Holy Communion. He's confronted the truth that one of his close friends is no longer on side and has turned against him behind his back. He knows the direction of travel. He's been trying to warn his disciples of it for weeks, but they seem so slow to grasp it. And now he knows the crunch is coming and it's to a familiar spot that he returns 
to Gethsemane at the foot of the Mount of Olives. Jesus tells us that he went there as usual to pray. But tonight his prayers are anything but usual. Abba, Father, he prays, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. It's hard to get inside the head of Jesus to know what he's thinking as he prays of the Father's plan of the reason for his coming to earth. His words to his disciples make it clear that he comes to Jerusalem expecting to be put to death. His sharp words to Peter, so soon after his declaration of Jesus as Son of God, Get behind me, Satan! suggests the very real temptation there was to avoid the crucifixion showdown. And here in Gethsemane that possibility arises again in his prayers. Yet even as the Son of God prays to his Father, he accepts the possibility of not receiving that for which he prays. The Gospels are full of invitations to us to bring our needs to our Heavenly Father and promises that he'll hear us and answer. In church we pray often, we encourage people to receive personal prayer ministry and we encourage people with scriptures warrant to pray with hope and expectation. And yet there's not one of us who has prayed and found no answer or an answer which we didn't want to receive. Many of you will know that the reason that we moved to Hampshire in retirement was to provide support to our daughter in Formarks and her family in caring for their severely disabled son, then a student at Trelaws. And the memory is vivid of being called from a PCC meeting in Bath to travel across the country to Hertfordshire to the hospital where the birth of our first grandson had gone horribly wrong. His parents were in missionary training to go and work for God in the slums of Mumbai. But all that changed on that day, as the whole nature of their life and marriage was redirected for these event, by these events. And 16 struggling years later, Benjamin got a chest infection which put him in hospital with collapsing lungs. Before his birth, at his birth, through his life, in his illness, the gates of heaven were assaulted with the prayers of his parents, his family, their friends, their church and caring fellow Christians around the world. But on month Mark, May the 13th, he died. And some of you were at the amazing celebration which was his funeral service, a celebration of his life, his faith, a life which over 16 years made a difference to many, but which, while it was punctuated by many answered prayers and miracles, was also punctuated by much prayer that was not answered. There can be few of us who cannot tell a similar story from within our families, of cancers unhealed, of seemingly premature death, of pain undiminished, of marriages unprepared, of hopes unfulfilled, of plans unachieved. And the fact is that part of the Christian story and the Christian mystery is that often we pray and are disappointed. As we see Jesus in his extremity of stress and anguish in the garden, we can learn for, our, for ourselves. In his moment of need, his response is to come to the one we hear him calling Abba, Father. Just the name by which we are encouraged to know and pray to God ourselves. And this is our privilege as redeemed people in whom the Spirit of God dwells. Whatever the situation or extremity, our invitation is to come to Abba, Father, Daddy, to cast our cares on him, as Peter exhorts. To have the example of Jesus, we have the example of Jesus to encourage us. If things are tough, if answers seem elusive, remember Jesus in his prayers. 
praying for relief, but receiving none. Whatever challenges we face to faith and prayer, we can remember that Jesus has been there before us. He understands. He stands alongside us. Jesus' friends were a letdown. As he prayed, they slept. Let us hope we have more reliable friends to support us with their prayers as we pray. It's such a privilege in the Christian family that we can support each other when supporting ourselves seems beyond us. And as we look at the rest of the New Testament, as we look at Christian history, as we look around us, we know that life is a roller coaster and that hardships, apparently unanswered prayers, are part of the story. When Jesus had prayed to his Father, he got up and went on. So soon into his re arrest and the rest of the Easter story with tragedy, but then its amazing ending. How sad when we see a person whose faith is defeated by hard events and unanswered prayer. In Romans 5, Paul writes, We know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. Jesus went into suffering, but then came Easter. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we look at Scripture and see that all of human life is reflected there, prayers answered, miracles done, and then prayers which seem not to be answered, we pray that you will enable us to be steadfast, to be prayerful, to be full of hope and expectation, and to go on in trust in you, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Reflecting upon all that we've learned, let us say together the words that declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now turn to God in prayer. Our prayers today are led by K. Hunter Johnson. Let us pray. Our prayers this week will follow the daily themes of prayer for the nation, the Archbishops of Canterbury and York's joint invitation to daily prayer during February, which finishes this evening. Gracious God, we pray for all those in positions of authority in this country and throughout the world. We ask that you might give them wisdom beyond human wisdom, your godly insight at this difficult time, and a deep commitment to all as they shape policies and make decisions. We pray for businesses and the workplace. We lift to you all who have lost their jobs and who, with many others fearful of losing their jobs, face an uncertain and difficult future. Help us to support them in any way we can and may they draw strength from you in these difficult days. We continue to give thanks for all our medical staff and frontline workers and all other key workers who put their lives and health on the line to save ours. We pray for your hand over their physical and mental health. Give them strength, encourage them in their continued work of sacrifice and help them to find peace. We pray for our schools and colleges children and young people. 
We thank you for the hard work and commitment of teachers and care workers. We pray for all families where their children are learning remotely and that you will give them the strength and patience they need to homeschool. We thank you that our children will be returning to school on 8th March and pray that they will be able to catch up and flourish. We lift to God those we hold close to our hearts, our families, friends and all those we love. We pray that, even when we cannot physically be together, we might stay close to each other. And we thank you that we now have real hope that we shall soon be able to meet up face to face. We pray for all who are grieving or who are suffering with physical or mental ill health. We pray for families devastated by the untimely death of a loved one and for anyone who is ill or waiting for urgent and life-saving treatment and those who feel anxious or depressed. Please comfort those who mourn, bring health to the sick and peace to the fearful. Gracious God, we pray your protection on the elderly, isolated and vulnerable and those who care for them. We thank you for the hope that the vaccines are bringing and that visiting will soon be allowed to all those who are so lonely, separated from their families in care homes. Help us all to look out for and to look after anyone we know who needs our help, love and encouragement. Finally, a prayer by Ignatius of Loyola, which comes at the end of the first session of the unanswered prayer course. O oh Christ Jesus, when all is darkness and we feel our weakness and helplessness, give us the sense of your presence, your love and your strength. Help us to have perfect trust in your protecting love and strengthening power so that nothing may frighten or worry us. For, living close to you, we shall see your hand, your purpose, your will through all things. Amen. And now we finish by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Fred Kay. And we'll now close our service by singing that glorious song of praise written by Matt Redman, 10,000 Reasons, uh, which is also, it's also called Bless the Lord, but 10,000 Reasons.
a short prayer and a blessing to close our service. Jesus, Son of God, our true and only Saviour, you, li- you died like a criminal on the cross, but you are God who forgives. Once broken, helpless and in pain, you are God in whom there is hope. You've shown us love beyond words. Give us your forgiveness, hope and love. Amen. May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give you a contrite heart. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal us by his wounds. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to us words of pardon and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We also have many other things that you can join in, such as Live at 5 this afternoon, where chat starts at 4.30 p.m. And the details are all on the church website. And there's prayer for the nation every day at 6 p.m. This and much more is on offer. Thank you for joining us. May you have a blessed day. Sure.